going on my YouTube fam and clan? It's your boy Uncommon Sense here, aka Dre, the homie from around the way. And today's video is gonna center around the top 10 fragrances, niche and indie edition for spring 2021. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want you to take a look around at the content. Once you found a few things you rocking with, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Cut on that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything that we got going on the channel. We talk about all things fashion, fragrance, style, mental health, well-being, and wellness. A little bit of cooking and stuff mixed in. So, after the jump, we're going to get into this thing. Are y'all ready? Well, let's go! Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my way Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my, that's my way up to our number 10 spot Juliet has a gun anyway let's get a spritz of that nice itemized crisp clean floral this is the eau de parfum concentration but in my experience this fragrance tends to wear a little light on my skin very inoffensive it's sexy it's a unisex fragrance, but some may argue that it leans a little bit to the softer side, partially because it is a white floral. However, it's one of those fragrances you can wear just about anywhere. It's very clean. Mm. So if you guys have not checked out Juliet Has a Gun anyway, give it a shot. We're coming up to our number nine spot. We got Mancera's Musky Garden. This fragrance on my skin comes up a lot more creamy, kind of lotion-like, depending on what your fragrance taste is. Some may say it leans a bit more feminine. It's a fragrance that, that manages to be very present while still being inobtrusive. Light floral, you get some rose, musk, Mancera's Musky Garden. It's not for the faint of heart. Beautiful bottle. And the fragrance is really creamy. I, I, I would expect a hand lotion or a body cream to smell like this. However, this fragrance tends to last all day. I had it on under a jacket and I can smell it coming out of the jacket. So y'all know how Mancera get down. Don't act like you don't know. Floral fragrances are not for the faint of heart. If you're not an individual who can rock a fragrance and have confidence in it, I would not suggest this. For those who are a little bit further along in their fragrance journey and looking for something a bit more complex, so give it a shot. That's gonna be number nine on this here top team. Coming up to our number eight spot, Peach Daiquiri by Ganache Parfums. Jericho Covarrubias is the perfumer behind this fragrance. If you guys have not heard about this one, I think this one may be discontinued. But in my experience, Ganache Parfums have some of the most photorealistic types of scents. If the fragrance says it is a peach daiquiri, guess what it's gonna smell like? What? A motherfucking peach daiquiri. You get loads of peach in this. Peach is the main star here. You get a little bit of those lactonic notes just a bit with like a gin or vodka, boozy type of background. Mm. You might be wondering, why would I want to smell like a peach daiquiri? I would want to smell like a peach daiquiri in spring because when I think of renewal and freshness, etc., that's what I think of. I think of spring and peach, things starting to grow, the trees starting to bud. I think of these types of fragrances. It may be discontinued, but check out the Nash Parfums website because you may look up on something. That's gonna do it for our number eight spot on the spring top 10. Coming up to our number seven spot, we had a fragrance that I was exposed to by another fragrance reviewer who had raved about this one, same as another fragrance that I actually just mentioned earlier in the top 10. And I was on the chat and somebody said, hmm, I wonder how this fragrance will smell on a man. Then since I'm no stranger really to bending the rules and doing what I wanna do, I went ahead and hopped on it and took it as a personal challenge. So, Mancera's Wild Python. Mancera's Wild Python is a very tube rose forward fragrance. 
This one, all I really get out of it is a lot of white florals and tuberose. The tuberose in this one, though, is one that is a bit more digestible to my nose. I've tried Bonds, Chinatown, the tuberose there was a little more chalky. This tuberose that's in this fragrance is a little more juicy, kind of like juicy fruit gum. Spritz. Mm. Now, this one is not for the faint of heart. It is strong, but this one smells like spring. And I wouldn't be surprised if they should have probably named this one Musky Garden because it really smells like a garden. It has two rows. There is a jasmine here that I usually do not like these types of jasmines. The more indolic style jasmines, it's present here, but it's not so overpowering where it's kind of gross. It works well in wild python, partially because you got the tuberose that's juicy, and then you have the other florals that kind of balance it out, so the indolic jasmine does not become problematic. This is a fragrance that is, in my experience, just a little bit hard to wear because I have a hard time trying to figure out when to wear it. Spring, mostly, because it smells like a flower garden. But in terms of which setting, that's where I have a little bit of a challenge. I would definitely suggest wearing this where you're gonna be outside versus inside. So when the world opened back up, things will turn back to normal. Not that there'll probably ever be a normal that we're used to beyond what we've recently experienced. I would opt to wear wild python more in settings where I'm going to be outside, maybe a festival, maybe to the taste of Chicago if we ever get that again, or to an outdoor concert. I more or less probably would not want to smell like this bottled up at a club or anything like that. Coming up to our number six spot, we have a, another ganache parfum. This one is called Berry Lemonade. This fragrance is so sweet, and it really just smells like a glass of lemonade with berries in it. Raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry, you name it, and lemonade. It has this sweet, fruity tartness that is, it just reminds me of like a smoothie, but it smells really, really, really delicious. And I'm no stranger to wearing fragrances that are typically marketed toward women or more unisex fragrances because those types of fragrances tend to fare better on my skin and smell better to me on me. This is a fragrance, as you can see, I put a nice little dent in this bag. I wear it occasionally, but I've been waiting for spring again, and let's get us a spritz. Did not need that many, but hey. It smells like Nerds candies mixed with lemonade. That's what this smells like. It smells so good and it really conjures up the experience of strawberry lemonade. Get into that. Y'all can see. I'm trying to get this bad but folks. Cool. Coming up to our number five spot. This is one that's a little bit newer to my collection. One of my subscribers and one of my great friends in the fragrance community sent me two samples of fragrances because I was asking about them in the fragrance groups. He sent me very generous decants of more expensive fragrances, so I'm very, so very thankful. And again, shout out, you know who you are, I'm not gonna name drop, but thank you so much. And it actually led me to wear this fragrance a few times because I wasn't so sure about it in the first time. The second and third time I wore it though, I was like, yo, yo, I gotta, gotta get me a full, 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 full. You wanna know what it is? Man, Sarah's Hindu Kush. This fragrance is very green. Very green. <laughs> this one is one of the ones in Mancera's collection where you do get the magnetic cap and the dope compressed spray. I can't see wearing this any other time than spring and maybe early summer. We'll see how that fares. This fragrance it just makes me happy and it makes me super duper chill. So take from that what you will. It does have a cannabis note, have a subtle woody smokiness about it. It's, it's very fresh and green. That's, that's all I can really tell you other than it kind of smell like green. It's fresh, it's a little woody. I really feel like you have to experience this for yourselves. This one, in my experience and in my opinion, probably leans a little bit more masculine. I don't know if many of the ladies would like to smell like this. However, I'm sure sex, it can be pulled off. It depends on how you rock it. So, Again, that's number five, Hindu Kush by Mancera. Coming up to our number four spot, 
We have a niche fragrance house that I'm just not really getting into. I actually ordered the wrong fragrance of this one by mistake and ended up having to order this one shortly after that. But I ended up keeping both of them because they actually both smell good and they were different enough that they warranted spaces within my collection. Number four spot's gonna go to Molinard's Vanille Fruité. I found out about Molinard's Vanille Fruité from another fragrance content creator named Brygro. We'll link to his channel up above. If anybody knows Brygro, y'all know that he is a very low key, chill type of person. He's gonna give it to you straight up, do it smell good. He's gonna show you the collection, that's it. No frills other than that. However, this fragrance, he mentioned this one, and this one was enough to get him outside his character. Like, homie cussed and everything. So I was like, yo, if it can make him feel like that, maybe I need to get me a sample. I blind bought it. This one is very affordable. I paid no more than about 50 bucks for it. It's an eau de parfum concentration. And to my nose, it smells very similar to a Mancera fragrance that I wanted for some time after I got a chance to experience it from the lovely Dr. Rose. She sent me a sample of it but I believe it's out of stock and it's out of the range that I want to pay for the fragrance. Especially so now that I have this one, they smell very close, and that's Mancera's Black Vanilla. You get peach, osmanthus, vanilla bean pie, or vanilla caramel. This is a gourmand style fragrance, but it's one that you can wear in the spring. I will opt to wear this one more in the spring than I probably would in the fall or the winter for the partial fact that it's peach, and there's vanilla in that and the osmanthus. Those mixed together usually make me think of spring. There are only a few fragrances that have peach in them that I wear them at different times. Tom Ford's Bitter Peach, I'm looking at you. Or Dua's Sour Peach. Those fragrances I tend to wear probably more in the fall or mine time. But this one is such a sexy, delicious smelling fragrance. Bravo said neck kisses and I ain't gonna argue with that man because he know what the he talking about. But me, Fruité, by Molinar is our number four. Coming right on up to our number three spot. This is a fragrance that everybody seems to be talking about. I recently got this fragrance as a gift from my Secret Santa. Whoever you are, thank you so very much because I normally would have not tried this fragrance for the fact that it seems like everybody loves it. And I was like, eh, I don't need to have it if everybody loves it. You know us, we do on common sense. But I have to remand my statements once again, because I was, you know, gonna miss out on the hype train, but the hype is accurate. I enjoy the way this fragrance smells on me, to me, and that is Mancera's Cedrat Boise. Cedrat Boise does have some similarity to, I don't believe this is a clone of that one, but they do smell similar. You get some woods, loads of citrus, and there's a smoky slash burning type of accord. And vanilla. So the mixture of those fragrances or those accords kind of lend to a very smoky, fruity, juicy, woody style fragrance that leans, in my experience, a bit more masculine. I can see the ladies wearing this and having no problem, but this one does tend to lean a bit more masculine in my experience. I wore this fragrance on my birthday, and I really feel like this one's kind of a Swiss Army knife. You can wear this fragrance anytime, but I really feel like the time that it will shine will be early spring, spring, and maybe early summer. I can see fragrances that are heavy in citrus burning off very quickly for some of the time. I put a nice little dent in that bad boy, and I've only had it since December. And I have a larger collection, so that should tell you what's up. Coming up to our number two spot, we have an indie house that I recently just exposed myself to. Oh, this makes me sound like a flash. We have a indie house I recently delved into a bit more and I tend to favor their original blends a bit more than I favor their dupes. Even though they have several dupes that I enjoy, I actually like their dupes where they blend two fragrances together. The fragrance house I'm talking about is Dua. The fragrance I'm talking about is Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express is an original blend based off the marijuana strain of the same name. Pineapple Express. There is a very heavy, I think geranium, patchouli, and pineapple here that is so photorealistic. It does smell like cannabis, but it manages to smell like cannabis not being burned, but cannabis with a smoky burning accord. Make sense? Cool. This type of fragrance, I will opt to wear in the spring 
420, I'm looking at you. This fragrance smells so good on me to me. Ugh, it's just such an amazing fragrance for my skin. And I really enjoy this one. It has a juicy pineapple, kind of like one that's been candied or on the grill. It has the smoky sweetness. And then it has a little bit of a floral background. I think that's either geranium or patchouli. Mm, it just smells so damn sexy. Ugh, so number two spot is gonna go to Duas Pineapple Express. And I actually found out from Amina and D'Angelo that du'as are daily prayers. So du'a is a prayer in Arabic, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll leave that information below. Just put y'all on, give you a little bit of stuff that I've learned on my favorite journey. I'm always learning. It's always a good time. Number two spot, Pineapple Express by Duwa. You made it. You made it. You watch the whole video with me. I appreciate y'all for sticking around and watching this video to the number one spot. And the number one spot for spring 2021 is Mancera's Jardin Exclusive. Listen, this is another one of the magnetic caps. I've had some really great experiences with this fragrance. This fragrance smells so fresh, floral, clean, and sexy on my skin. I almost got attacked at the grocery store and I almost got attacked at the post office with masks between Texas gas. The post office attendant was like, You smell good. And the Cougars was on me that day. <laughs> but this fragrance is not to be trifled with. It's a fragrance that, it's a floral fragrance, but there is a clean kind of dove soap vibe I get from this one. It's along the lines of Zerjoff's Herbal Pura, uh, Al Haramein Amber Oud, Gold or Amber Gold, whatever the name of it is. Kind of like Jasmine Whispers. This one, it's not as fruity, but this one is juicier, if that makes any sense. Just, oh, damn, sexy. It's floral, it's fresh, it's clean, it's alluring. I would definitely say this is a unisex fragrance to the T. It can lean either way. On my skin, it comes up a bit cleaner. A little less floral, but very bright. On a woman's skin, it's probably gonna come with a hell of a lot more floral, a bit more fruity, and less clean slash soap. Y'all enjoyed this top 10. Let me know what you're gonna be rocking for this spring along the niche and in the side. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this list. And if this has been your man on Common Sense, I thank you all for watching my content, sharing my content, coming back. When you see the bell, the notification, dropping by the lives, giving me super stickers and super chats and supporting the channel the way you do. I can't do what I do without you. And I love you from the bottom of my heart, the top, the sides, and all the way around. Then we're going to lift the hatch and love on you. We out. Till next time. All right.